In my last video, I showed you how to make this tool. It's a knife that was found with the frozen body of a man that was trapped in a glacier several hundred years ago in British Columbia. He became known as the Canadian Iceman, also known as person from long ago found. And this knife was found inside a sheath made out of ground squirrel skin. So in this video, we're gonna complete the project and make a sheath out of ground squirrel skin sewn together with sinew. Now the first step is to get a ground squirrel to take off the skin. I'm gonna skin it with this knife, but to catch the squirrel, I'm gonna use a primitive trap known as a deadfall. There are several different styles of deadfalls, and for this video, I'm gonna use a figure four deadfall, which is really effective, and I like it because all you need is a flat rock and some sticks you carve notches into, and you can catch animals such as squirrels, rodents, and even larger. And it's real simple to make. I've already shown a video on how to make this deadfall. So click the link in the description below to see how to make it. But basically you just have a stick here that rests on this one. You set up your deadfall and you have a trigger stick. Very simple to set. The bait's under here, the animal comes, puts its head under that rock and when it triggers it, it comes down and crushes its head and then you have your squirrel. Now I'm gonna set a second rock on top just to make sure we have enough weight to instantly kill them. I've been told that these traps aren't effective, but I've shown that they are. They can catch mice, rats, squirrels, and larger animals. So let's go set this up where we can catch some squirrels, get our skin, and complete this project. These deadfall style traps have been used for thousands of years. They're really effective and they're easy to build. You just need a flat rock and some sticks and you can catch animals. And I got two squirrels at once. That's really good. I'm glad I had the second rock for extra weight here. And if you look under there, there's the two squirrels. They tried to get that bait and it came down and killed them very quickly. We now have the ground squirrel skins we need to make our knife sheath. They use these squirrel skins for a lot of things, including making a robe for clothing and also for our knife sheath. So I'll skin these out using the knife we just made and make a reproduction sheath out of ground squirrel skin. Here's one of the ground squirrels we caught in our deadfall trap and it's just the right length to make our sheath. So we're gonna skin this. I'm gonna go ahead and do the cut up the belly. This will be a good test for our knife to see how well it works. Just do a nice little cut there, being sure not to rupture the gut sack. I think I'll actually start up top and then go down. Lift that skin up. That knife worked well to cut the line all the way down the belly. And you can see the hide there. You can just start to peel it back. And then we'll uh, make sure to not get any of that muscle. We'll have to scrape that off later. But it's really warm out here, so I want to do this quickly. And uh, just gently cut that meat off. And sometimes once you get the initial cut, you can just rip it off here. So let's skin this squirrel. We're gonna cut around the legs, around the tail. We just want this round core part, uh, especially that back fur is nice and thick. Once you get that initial cut, you can see how well it just peels right off. There's that hide and it's pretty clean. It doesn't have really any fat or muscle on there. And then right around the head, I'm just gonna do a little cut there and uh, remove that hide right around the head. This knife worked really well. I was able to completely remove this hide here. This will be perfect for our sheath. We just gotta clean it up a little and then sew it up. And the meat for the squirrel you can eat. Squirrel meat's really good. I'm sure natives ate the squirrel meat, but I'm doing a video series right now where I'm seeing what scavengers come and clean up all the dead rodents that I catch in these videos. So I'm gonna go set this out and see if we can have some animals come eat it. Last week we had an owl and a possum come and eat it, and the flies obviously want this too. They'll lay their eggs really soon. But I'm gonna go set this up with motion cameras and feed a wild animal with this squirrel. So stay tuned for that video. But for now, this is what we're interested in, the squirrel skin. We're gonna sew it up and it's gonna make a really nice sheath for our knife. So here's our squirrel skin all trimmed up. The hair side is at the top here. I'm gonna flip that over. And as you can see on the flesh side, we have to do a little work. I'm gonna do this in a raw hide, which means I'm basically not gonna tan it. You can brain tan it, uh, mix it with brains and then smoke it. But here I'm just gonna make a raw hide. It's a little stiffer and I think will hold up to the sheath better. But we can't make a raw hide unless we remove all the fat and all the meat. There's a little meat right here. So I'm just gonna use this as a scraper, pull that open and give it a pull as I cut comes right off. I'm mostly just using this metal blade as a scraper, not to cut it off, but to push it off or scrape it off. As you can see, that really nice rawhide below, that layer of fat. So we'll do that with this whole skin. So here's our ground squirrel hide. I've scraped off most of the fat and muscle. This will dry nicely, and it's a good length. You put your knife in there, you can fold it over, and you can see what the final project's gonna look like. Now we just need to sew this up. To sew it up, I'm gonna use sinew. 
That's what we use to wrap the blade on. It's the tendons of the deer elk along the back. And I'm just gonna tease out these really strong fibers here. Poke holes along the edge using the knife like an awl and then sew up the ends. I'm gonna sew it up inside out and then when it dries, I'll turn it inside out like a sock and it will fit nicely into our sheath. I'm gonna start on the bottom here where the blade will be. Just poke a hole on either side and then uh, run that sinew through. I got our sinew thread tied off at the bottom there. I'll continue poking holes along the edge and sewing it together and then show you what that looks like. Our squirrel hide sheath is coming along really nice. We have this edge here that I sewed up. I'm using a baseball stitch going in to out with the sinew thread. And when you put your knife in there, it looks pretty good. I have a few more stitches to do, so I just go from the outside in, poke the hole there, run it through. It's just like sewing up clothes. So I'm pretty much at a point where I can tie off this top part. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna let this cure in the sun until it's completely dry like this and then turn it inside out. And you can see that really nice skin there. But you can hardly see that stitch. It runs all the way up here. And that's how he carried his knife. A nice little sheath to protect it. And then you can pull it out when you need it. So once this dries and becomes hard, our project's pretty much done. We have a nice protective sheath here for our knife. You can slide it down in there. And then you can carry it around. It's protected from the weather. The blade there is protected on the bottom because that skin's pretty hard. And then when you need it, you can just pull it out, use it, and put it back. So that's what the sheath looked like, a really basic squirrel skin sewn together with sinew and a holder for the knife. If you want to learn more about the Canadian Iceman story, it's really interesting. I'll put the link in the description below. I encourage you to do your own research and read about it. I actually had the opportunity of meeting one of the sheep hunters that originally found the body and then he returned later and found the head that was missing. So an amazing story and uh, he had a really interesting uh, slideshow to see. But definitely an interesting archaeological find that shows us how people lived several hundred years ago in Canada.